S&P staged a major reversal at a key level. Hey guys, tonight's video, I'm not gonna have the intro. We're gonna go through a lot of stocks, a lot of indexes, and I'm gonna do it fast. You're gonna probably wanna watch a couple pieces of this over a couple times, but it, I can get more accomplished for you by doing it this way this evening. I was trying to figure out the best way to pack the most in. This is the way to do it. Let's get to it. So first and foremost, we have to look at what happened today, and then we have to discuss what we're gonna do about it. So first and foremost, there is our 55 on the ES, and we need to talk about that now. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna get rid of the 22, we're gonna get rid of the 12. For those that are new, welcome. We use the 55. You should use whatever you're comfortable with. So I just wanna discuss this. You get over the 55, which I use for marking institutional support, and then they automatically crack you down and encapsulate this bar. Now, when they do this, there's a couple things that take place. Number one, you encapsulate the bar, so you're creating what? We are creating a bearish engulfing that usually leads to downward action. On top of that, what I don't like more than anything is we're seeing this little bit of a line start to form. Let me show you the line, and you'll see it right in here. See that right there? See how you're breaking there? So that usually leads to a test of right around this level. I would watch that. That's 30, 43, 55. Let's get you an exact level on that. And I'd mark these down for tomorrow. We have Jackson Hole tomorrow. Now, you remember what happened last Jackson Hole. Maybe you don't, but we dropped 5%. 4346 is what they're telling me. This appears to tell me 4350. Let's drop that magnet on right now. Let's get to that magnet and make sure that that's perfect. So you're going to want to watch that 4350 tomorrow. Am I surprised that we sold off today? Not surprised we sold off. I am surprised at how strong the sell-off was, candidly. We could sit there and talk about, is there going to be some other kind of reaction out there? I think we sold off for a couple reasons, but nonetheless, we have to respect this right here. We have to respect that we hit the 55, and since we broke the 55 here, we have not closed above it. And that's a key level, I'm gonna do it again. You broke the 55 here, you have not closed above it. Today was our day. Now, we're gonna go through a bunch of names. There's some long-term names out there that came in today. That long term I like, but that doesn't mean that they can't be weaker. 4350 needs to hold. I know you're looking at this right now and saying, well, how's that gonna happen? You're just assuming we're gonna get there. It would be very rare to have something like this and not have some kind of follow through, especially with earnings this evening. And we're gonna get to a couple of those. But I would focus very heavily on this level. I would mark it down. This would be my resistance level, that 55. If you use a 50, use the 50. That's entirely up to you. I, I will just show you something very quickly that I get asked a lot about why I use these different levels. I'm just gonna drop this in so that you can see. Okay, I tried to get above the 55. I couldn't get above the 55 here, right? You're still, people are still waiting to see if you're gonna reject the 50. I already got through the 50. I already know you're gonna reject. This tells me key reversal and rejection levels faster than people that are looking at the 50. I'll give you another example. Right, here I am. I know over here that I got above the 55. You don't know because you're looking at a 50. All right, so this gave us a signal and we acted on that signal on Friday and we did quite well with that trade in the room. I think I actually showed that trade. So there's there's two reasons that I use the 55. I can get more into the math behind it later. I really wanna focus on the names and what transpired today. Before we get into NVIDIA, we need to just talk about NQ. One more time, 4350. He speaks at 10 o'clock tomorrow. His last speech was eight minutes long and the market went down 5%. So here we are at the top of the chart. I don't like this pattern. I don't like it at all. Now, you'll know that the 50 is gonna be up here somewhere. Try to get over the 55, couldn't. Try to get over the 55 again, and what? Couldn't. We just have to respect that. You have to respect the bullish or the bearish engulfing. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that we're you know, automatically gonna go back to 12,000, that there's a credit event, that the world's gonna collapse. It just means that for now, we hit here, and we were unable to close above it. It does mean a couple other things too. It does mean that we are back below the 12 and you have a 2255 cross. None of this should make you feel warm and fuzzy, right? I mean, none of it should make you feel great about the way that that's acting. But the bottom line with it is, it is what it is. It, we should have pushed through off of NVIDIA if we were going to, we just, we didn't. The, their quarter was excellent. I mean, there's, there's nothing you can take away. People are gonna say, oh, it's the PE. We'll get into that in a moment. But if you look right here, you just classic rejection. 
and then the lower low, and it's, it's just not what you want to see at all. Now, you couldn't get above 50 on the RSI, and so what does that do? That gives us another indicator that we're going to roll. And I will say this, when you see you're starting to try to get through 50 and you're unable to, when that happens, you want to pay attention to that on the RSI. If you're running up to that 50, which gets you back to neutral, and they're saying, no, we're going to stay oversold, that's something you want to pay attention to because it usually means there's another leg or there's more pain out there. So I thought we might see a bounce in some of these in some of this tomorrow based upon some of the earnings that came out tonight. We're going to drill into a couple of them. But these are some core levels that you really have to remember for tomorrow. Number one, you're going to obviously want to watch that 14817 for obvious reasons. You're going to want to know exactly how that goes right there. I think that's pretty pertinent. I, I, I mean, I think it's pretty clear as to why. Also, what I don't like is I don't like when you come up bars like this, one, two, three, hit a key level and reject. It's almost like institutions are waiting to sell up here. And that's again, that's not what you want to see. So then you run into a couple other issues here with the doji. And that there's some things that we have to focus on, like, are we going to break that doji? Are we not going to break that doji? I don't have an answer to that just yet, but you need to pay attention to that level. So that's another level 14609 that you need to pay attention to tomorrow. You can see it right here. OK, so I'm giving you exact levels because tomorrow is going to be pretty fierce. You're going to have a lot of volatility tomorrow and you're better off being set up. It's one of the things I went through in yesterday's video and I'll link yesterday's video at the end. So if you watch the pre-market today, we'll get into how we handled the video. It was exactly as we went through the pre-market. As you know, if you're not new here, you know all these videos are linked together starting with Saturdays and then we recover in the pre-market and then I cut live pre-market and then we do a post wrap up at the end. So subscribe to the channel if that's of interest. And I do appreciate those that are sharing this. And you'd be surprised at the amount of emails that I'm getting from people that are saying thank you, mostly for keeping people out of harm's way, which is usually, you know, 60% of the battle. Now, if you look at this, we will note this because we've been going through it all week. We've been saying you have to watch this. Here's the symbol SPH. S&P stocks above the 200 day moving average on a percentage basis. This is a percentage calculation. 50 and what happens? We start to underperform. Tried to get above 50, couldn't, couldn't. That's a break, guys. That's a clear break. Does not get any clearer. I would expect the S&P to underperform now. And that means that I would expect it weaker. For time's sake, we're not going to do it. But if you go here and mark these locations down, you can see from right here and you can pull this up on TradingView yourself for free. You don't even have to pay trading bill and go and take a look at this level and go look at when we rallied. Your strongest rallies were over the 50 and the weakest markets get were what? When we broke the 50, you can see this. This was regionals and guess what happened? So we're setting up here and there's some other indicators that we've been following that we must look at. So we keep talking about the dollar that keeps playing with us. Are they going to get over? Are they not going to get over? Okay. You're starting to curl up a little bit here. We still have our death cross, which we can pop in right here. Let's pop that in. You still have your death cross here where you have a 55 and 200. And for me, this is still in control until we get something here where the 55 crosses up. Yeah, and I am getting signs of that, right? The 12 is obviously going to cross first, then the 22 is going to cross before the 55 crosses. So I do get indicators that it's going to happen ahead of time. But am I just getting overbought again? I mean, we didn't really make a higher high, but you do have Japan that has become an issue. We do have the Fed that it's becoming very clear after Japan. They're not done, most likely, right? They, they might hike again, and we had them done. That's what everybody had. So the dollar is becoming an issue. And whether or not we want it to be an issue, it doesn't really matter. It is. So if we just look at this plane with nothing on it, this was the channel we drew on Saturday and said, let's just watch. We're riding the line. We're not riding the line anymore, right? So, and the way that we're selling off, and I, I will put on the tinfoil hat, the way we're selling off on this market, you can see why I went to save all this and just get into it. So you're going to want to watch this, this level pretty, pretty hard tomorrow. You want to watch the 104 level. You don't want to get over 104. You don't want to start breaking into whole numbers. Whole numbers technically on things like the dollar make a difference. And then you have to watch to make sure that you don't get up to here, which wouldn't happen in a day unless he comes out and says they see more than one hike, but he's going to say job not finished tomorrow. I mean, that's what's we're on the right track, but job's not done. That's the language that's floating around this evening on trading desks. So just do it that way you will. You can see the reversal here in the VIX. That's not what we want to see at all. So we're starting to see weakness going into that. This was one of the signs we had earlier in the week that we went over okay, the XLF. And you look at this reversal. 
that is just nasty. That's a shooting star on the sector. You could see where we rolled right here. That is a clear rejection. And now this is another clear rejection. This is not what we want to see. I, I cannot be any clearer. I was looking at the charts, looking at the indexes, looking at the futures. And my sense of it was, okay, well, we're, we're selling down, uh, but are we selling down? That's something I need to be concerned about. And then you start running all your charts at the close and you start seeing that all of them are really closing below key levels. Even Netflix that has nothing to do with tonight, nothing at all. But let's jump into NVIDIA. So if you watch this morning, we were pretty vocal about what to do. And we said that, hey, you know, you're coming in and you're already overbought. Uh, you can go listen to the pre-market call. I mean, I said the first tick down, I'm out. First tick down, I was out. Now, what's crazy about that is even though I got out of those 500s, by the time that I got out, even myself, it was not pretty. It was not this huge lucrative win that I expected to have. And you can just see right off the open. Now, usually when this happens, you see some kind of bounce, something. Now, if we clean all this off, drop into a five, and then we're just going to remember this is NVIDIA. And we're just going to take everything off for a moment. And I just want to go through this so that you can see. Let's get that off and let's drop this down as well and that down okay let's get rid of it so if we just look right here all right perfect so this is five minutes and we're looking at nvidia and what you're seeing usually it's retail that sells but in this case we had no bounce look at this one minute there was no bounce and then you just formed a bear flag and what was crazy about it was just how systematic it was look at this look at this with the vweb today this was crazy how just systematic this was right here all day long you couldn't get above it. And they kept pushing like you were gonna get above it and then they failed. You could see the failure here and then it fails here and then they don't give you follow through. There's no follow through. And then it finally, it finally cracks here, but you know, how many times are you gonna fall for the banana in the tailpipe? You see all the wicks? So how many times is somebody gonna short that before they're like, oh, well, that's not gonna hold. And then of course that one holds, your rallies back up to VWAP, breaks, tries to get over that level because that this bar becomes a key level, right? The top of that, we all know that. So if you've been watching these videos, you know that. And then you can kind of see how you responded to it. Now for us, just to be crystal clear, I tried twice in here over that VWAP to go long, twice. And one time I felt smart and then I wasn't. So neither really worked. I lost a little bit of money. I made it back later in the day and I will show you this and what I was looking for. It was pretty, it was pretty clear stuff, but let me just walk you through it. You can actually do it through just by looking at the price. Now, the reason I'm showing this is because of your comments yesterday and to show more live trades. It's much easier for me to show you the room this way than for me to make another video on it. It's just, it's way, way simpler. So we'll go through it this way. So this is what we say at 12, 12, and we say 482, that's where we're getting in at 479 stop. And then I just, this is how people get notified. But then I just said, that's a wide stop for us on a day trade on the day, but I'm trying to stay in for more than a scalp. So I let people know what they're doing. And then I tell them that if you are looking for it, you want to get yourself in that position, right? Into VWAP, you're going to want to scale out of it, right? When everyone's getting ready to buy, you're going to want to scale out. And then you kind of come here and take a look at that. And what I'm looking at on this chart, when I show the setup is here you are rejection, rejection and then when we popped over right here that's when we put it on there's a bunch of other little indicators that i'm, I'm not going to get into tonight for time's sake that told me to do this or gave me an indication that this was going to work and then we just work the trade up so if up a dollar up a dollar if scalping uh scale out and then move stuff to break even at least on partial so you know it's a bad day so you want to just protect capital at all costs because you already probably got hit a couple times and you don't want to keep getting hit your goal is to start building positive momentum as a trader the minute you have negative momentum you want positive momentum you want that winning trade and i'm showing this and i'll explain it for a reason and then up two dollars scale out watch the beast get up three dollars scale out if scalping you have to assume it's not going to break you want positive slippage what is positive slippage when it's going up here when it's going up into the trade all right so when it's going up into this you sell into strength and you don't assume it's going to break and just keep going like these like these yahoos did and then it doesn't break right if they were fortunate enough to buy here and they're saying oh it's definitely going to break and then it doesn't and now their hopes and dreams are smashed you don't want that right? You want a methodical system that is consistent, that works. 
Now, if you look at this, we're scaling out, we're scaling out. Now, mind you, this is me firing into it for the third time after the first two did not work. This is me hoping that SMCI, which I have a starter on, is gonna hold here, and my hopes and dreams were smashed, and it did not, but we made up with for it on several other trades, but nonetheless, it's stay on course. So here's NVIDIA, and then we draw out. So when in doubt, zoom out. So then I start looking at the 15 minute and going, well, we're holding, we're holding. We got tighter, we held right against there, and we're not breaking down. It could push through. So I zoom out on that, and then after that, what I do is I tr start to assess the next target. We're right there, so that means that we could set up and push. If you're eating up right under there, let's do it this way so you can get this. And you're probably going to want to watch this part a couple times. But it's much better for me to do live lessons like this. And please comment below on this. But you see that right there? See that if you zoom in on it? So all of a sudden, we're eating up supply. I have demand under VWAP. We're eating it up. We're not rejecting off of it. We don't, there's no you know, sudden movements where they're spiking us up. We're just eating us up and we're not dropping. So that tells me that I've got demand there, right? So if I have demand, that means they're, they're gonna eat up supply. Okay, so what that tells me is then I could, where my next target is. Well, my next target is the top of the bear flag, which is 489. And I say moonshot because it could happen really fast. Why? Because there's nothing in here. There's none of this nonsense. It's just these long, red, nasty bars. So you would test that bar right in there. And then we just walk through the trade, up $5, scalp out, close under, and then you move your stop to a one or a five minute. Should, should it get under that on V? And then you're there. And then I trimmed up $5, 44 was my stop on it. And I just waited. And then just letting everybody know that patience pays. And then you can see that we got to my target level right here at what was that 489 you can see right there and then i don't wait i don't assume it's going to go higher that was my target i trim at my target i trim into it i get positive slippage you can see that right here target seven trimmed a target move rest to 484 thank you very much on to the next one uh, disney was one that we shorted uh we shorted the other day uh, i have puts on the video and then you can see how that played out so Please comment on that. I think it's very helpful for people to see how actual trades are done. And I want to be real clear about that. That was the third attempt. This one, I lost like a dollar. I lost a dollar and a half again. But if you know what you're doing and your position sizes are the same, you just wait for the next setup. And you can see it right in here, right? Starts breaking down. So you have this trend line right here. And you can see that down one, two. It's usually the second one, frankly. But you can see that right here. And then you break tries to break, can't, and then you have a little trend that's coming across there. You're starting to get tighter in here. There's some other stuff in here like RSI. And then it just became increasingly clear that we were setting up higher high, higher high, got a little ball push, and then we were off to the races. And then you're just, you could see right in here how you're eating out, right? So you're just eating that all up. So you just wanna watch that. I mean, it's really important to get that. So I hope that's helpful. The question is now, and again, please comment on that. I might break all those out into a little, you know, little clips as lessons and, and make them so people can watch them. So this is where you're at. Let's go back to this and put it on and walk through this. So the question is now, what do you do? All right, well, let's deal with a couple things that are very grounded in reality about this stock and about this company. All right, so let's start with the basics. All right, 13.5 versus 11 billion. The quarter before, 6.5, 719. Okay, you're, you're doubling quarter versus quarter on your company, all right? You're gonna be extremely volatile. I, I say this all the time. You don't have $1.7 trillion in the market anymore. It's not gonna be just straight up. You don't have a Fed backstop like you did three years ago. You have to know that. So this is, the way we're trading is very similar. I think we Bush came out today and said, Web Bush came out today and said it's like 95. I, I'm gonna say it, it's maybe a little later in the game than 95. It's more like, to me, like 96. We start seeing like Netscape come out and you start understanding this. It was wild because you would be in a name like NVIDIA. For us, it was Cisco. And you, you, you'd be at something like $80 and it would go down to like 50. And then it would just go back up. like. It was absolutely wild because nobody understands it. So, and they get scared. So you have this huge, you have huge volatile swings that you can benefit from. Nothing technically changed about this company, nothing. And I think it's a very important distinction. You're above the 12, you're above the 55, you're above the 22. Nothing's changed there, but just as a rising tide lifts all bro boats, it's going to knock these things down. It is very rare for you to have this type of candle here. So this is called the Marboos Black. They might even 
call it that. And they may actually even use the right terminology there. Let me see. Yeah, they do. And you can see this on trading view. So it's a Marbuzu black. There's no shadow whatsoever. Okay, zero, zero shadow on there. And when there's no sh on there whatsoever, they mark tops. They do. And they're pretty good at it, like higher than a 50% chance. That doesn't mean it's the top forever. It just means it's the top now. All right, doesn't mean that's going to be there forever, but it does usually mean that there's more selling down. Keep that in mind, something to think about. Tesla, you know, it really didn't fall down that much and you didn't make a lower low. I want to go through a lot of names so you can kind of get a sense of what's going on in the market. And that's why we're doing tonight's video like this. Please comment below on the way that I did this video tonight because it is different than how we normally do the video. And I do want to show you something that if you, you won't be able to probably get it off tonight, but you probably really want to watch this tomorrow. It's something we did after hours. Uh, but if you take a look at Tesla, you can't even get above the 12. You have a 2255 cross. You should know these crosses by now if you've been watching these videos. I mean, you can literally go and run scans for this stuff on your trading system. Who's below the 55 or your 50, whatever you use. I don't like when you're trying to get through a 50 on the RSI and you can't do it. That does not make me feel warm and fuzzy. Watch to see if you break here tomorrow. Everything's gonna be on PAL. PAL is gonna come out and say the job's not finished. He can't possibly say job's done with the data that we're seeing come out right now. He can't. Okay, so that probably leads to equity prices coming down at least during or a little bit after that speech. Does it get as bad as it was before? I don't know. I will say this. You know, we've had some trades on that we were just sitting with like AAPD that literally came like within pennies. And I, I, I mean this, like literally pennies of getting stopped out or short uh, Apple uh, through this AAPD. And now look at that. I mean, that is a classic pump and dump, right? That is exactly what that is. We're gonna run it up, squeeze shorts, and then we're gonna rip it down. That does not look healthy, guys. So you start digging into this, and I wanna go through SMCI was one I traded today. Look at where we rejected. Let's clean up my levels. I rejected right here right at the 55. I mean, it doesn't get any clearer that you have a problem and that you're putting a top in. That does not mean it's the top forever. I, I think these companies are going to be massive, absolutely massive. But I think that you could go through some pain there. I mean, for those that follow me, you know that this pat, I like these to have wicks here to call it devil horns, but you don't want to see this. This is not what you want to see. And candidly, this was something that I had a starter position in today and I closed it after hours. And I'll tell you why I closed it after hours. Marvel's earnings were not that bad. They, they were not that bad. And their guidance was pretty much in line with where they said it was going to be. And they are killing it after hours down 5%. So I always look at the market sentiment. And if they're going to do that, well, that lets me know if you're going to take it down three, four bucks after hours, right? Down 5% on a good quarter. Well, you already told me which way we're going. You, you already told me that. So you look at something like this tomorrow and you're, you're telling me already that semis are going to drop tomorrow, right? You're already telegraphing it. If you've been doing this a long time or you've been doing this a while, you can you see the signs, right? These reversal bars, yes, usually there is more to it, but you never know with earnings coming out. Looking at this and how we move today, yeah, this is bad. And now you're coming straight across and you want to see how this acts. Well, this looks to me like a classic gap fill, to be honest. I mean, it looks like you're going to wind up gapping down to 49 bucks. It looks like a perfect gap fill trade for tomorrow, quite frankly. And maybe it's something to reevaluate when that happens. So I don't like what we're seeing there. I don't like the way that Ulta is explaining their earnings on the retail side, even though it's up. They're not really explaining it perfectly after hours on the call. I wasn't crazy about that. You're seeing Nordstrom's. You're trying to hold in there, but you're having a real tough time. So I'm not seeing really what I want on the that front. And I got to be honest, when I see this kind of particular pattern down one, two, three, this is four up and then back down. You got to be careful here, guys. You have to be really careful. And then you start going into these names like Amazon. That is a nasty reversal. So I'm not getting what I want from the market. So instead of me telling the market what it's going to do, why don't I just look at what the market's doing and make money off of it? I mean, that seems easier, right? I mean, that does seem an easier strategy than fighting the tape. Like, why bother? Just get it, take the loss, move on. It's simple. I mean, it's simple. It's not easy. Believe me, I, I've been there. Uh, I want to go through this name. This is one of the names that we've been following for a period of time. And this was a name that actually somebody threw out pre-market once. And then I just started doing some work on it. And I do think that this is going to be the next PCG. I do think it's going to be a zero. Uh, there's some speculation that, that there, they, there's, they did something in regards to the Maui documents 
I, I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole. The rabbit hole I'm going to go down is that they cut the dividend this evening. Okay, they're basically saying they, they're, they're not going to be paying the dividend and they're telling them ahead of time. So we shorted this after hours, uh, like 1140, 1150, went into the nines. It got down about two bucks already. I don't, you know, everyone's service is going to be different. Some people do not like to short. If you don't like to short, don't short. But we got down there to like 911. There was like two bucks there. This thing's toast. It just cannot get off the ground. My hope was that I could get a real short position off by bouncing the 20 and getting some something off. And I'm just not able to do that. So we need to pay attention to that. And I just want to focus on a couple things here. Nothing is nothing's really holding. Lowe's was a good quarter. It's broken. It's rolling. And you're seeing this all over the place. Look at Macy's down again today. This is a three bar pattern. One, two, three. This is clearly heading lower. I mean, you can see these breaks. I mean, that is a, you know, this is going to single digits. I mean, this is pretty clear that we're going to single digits. We're probably going to nine, ten dollars. I, I don't think there's any doubt about that. So you have these patterns like this. This is something we shorted the other day. You guys should watch this tomorrow. And that is a technical break. That doesn't get any clearer. So this is something that you should have on your radar. So we're short a little higher, but and put with throughputs, but you start going through this. I mean, you have the pandemic and that's it. And now they're getting, now they're having problems with the Snow White movie. I, I don't know what they're doing anymore over there, quite frankly, but I do know that they have lots of problems. Losing 12 million subscribers in three months to your service is not ideal. But I really want to hammer this home. You have to watch what's transpiring, not what you want to have happen. In other words, I kept hearing that it was going to be the these kinds of names that were going to rally. And we talked about this yesterday. We tried to follow it up. Here's that doji. We had to break over the doji for that to be actionable. Guess what didn't happen? We didn't break over the doji. Meta tries to roll up. Now look at this. This is a textbook. I mean, this is a te textbook short, textbook. And it doesn't get any, it doesn't get any clearer than this here. Let me show you. So let me just show it to you this way. Let me take off this magnet and then I'll drop in the levels. But you have your doji right here. So you know you were oversold. I don't even need it. You know you're oversold by the time that doji comes up. I mean, you get that, right? How far you're down. You bounce up to the control bar. You can't break above the control bar. You can't close above it. You can see here you didn't close above it. Can't close above it. Reverse, bearish engulfing there, right? That's also a, a Marbozu black and I broke support. Like it doesn't get any clearer that you have a problem there. Like you want, I can give you more, but it really doesn't give you anything. You you have to realize tomorrow that any action that you make before Jackson Hole, just FYI, so I can get this out there. I told you we had a lot to go over. See how you couldn't break above the 55 and the 12s right there. See how this is rolling. This is a classic, classic short position that I'll, I'll be looking at tomorrow. I could just just by looking at it, you can say it. So the thing that I'm getting at here with all of this. I can look at this market. I'm very comfortable in thinking that we could go higher by the end of the year. There's no way that I can look at this market right now after today's action and the rejection of that 55 on the S&P, on the NASDAQ, going in the Jackson Hole and think that it's a great idea to start going out there and buying equities, especially the way that we're acting on fairly decent earnings. That's it.